If that's a fish and not the bottom, that's a monster, man. My name is Cyril Shokang, and I spent my life traveling the world, chasing monster fish. This time, I'm crossing North America in search of a massive prehistoric beast. Look at the size of this fish. Weighing over 1,500 pounds, the white sturgeon is the largest freshwater fish in North America. Fish are nuts. Yeah, they're crazy. They're powerful fighters. Whoa. And the Gulf sturgeon has been known to jump and badly injure boaters. Never saw the darn thing coming. But finding this fish won't be easy. Ray was down there, but now I got to get down to it. Sturgeons often live near dangerous rapids. The thing is, people die on this river every year. And in areas where you can find all types of monsters. If it comes after you, run. Go ahead, go, go, oh my god. If it catches you, fight. My ultimate goal is to catch a huge white sturgeon. But even if I manage to hook one, he broke off a 150 pound braided line. The fight is far from over. Woo! I'm on a mission to catch the largest freshwater fish in North America, a fish that can grow to well over a thousand pounds, the white sturgeon. But right now, I'm in Florida to find out what it had to put up signs like this one. There are 26 species of sturgeon in the world, all powerful fighters that have been around for over 150 million years. But here is one species that has seriously injured and even killed human beings by accident, the Gulf sturgeon. I'm in North Florida, where the Suwannee River meets the Gulf of Mexico. Here, it's not the massive white sturgeon that's got everybody talking. It's the Gulf sturgeon, which was commercially fished almost to extinction and is now protected from Florida to Louisiana. The Gulf sturgeon is notorious because of its powerful jumps, which have become a real danger for the local boaters. Hey, Ron. Hey, Cyril. How you doing, man? I'm good. Yourself? Yeah, great, great. Welcome to North Florida and the historic Suwannee River there. It's hot. <laughs> that's a, that's Welcome can... to Florida. <laughs> so this is the spot where it happened? Yeah, yeah, just down there a little way. Same really? body of water, yep. So, man, I saw the, the pictures that you sent me. It's incredible what happened to you. What, what happened exactly? What... Yeah. Well, I was out on the Suwannee River with my oldest son, Blair. We were in a uh, fishing tournament, and uh, we were headed to one last place. And uh, I'm driving about 25 miles an hour in the right in the middle of the river. Fish jumps up in the front of the boat, hits me on the face and down this side of my body. And the next thing I know, I'm waking up on the floor, covered with blood. Really? Yeah, lip split, blood everywhere, which eyes just flashing like if you get hit with a bat or something. I never saw him, or if I have, I've lost all memory of it. Wow, can you believe the force of the impact? He knocked him out completely. But at the same time, you know he got lucky. He could have been way worse. Well, you're pretty lucky to be here to tell me that story. I am, and happy to be here, too. Some others aren't that lucky, you know. I do feel fortunate. Yeah, in yeah. a way. <laughs> yeah, in a way. <laughs> Man, Ron's story was unbelievable. Blows my mind. But you know what? He's not an isolated case. There's been many accidents involving jumping sturgeon along the Suwannee River. What's happening here is really intriguing. So I want to talk to some of the locals to find out more. How are you guys doing today? Good. Great. How are you? Pretty good. I've been uh, I've been talking to quite a few people on the river. It's dangerous. I mean, anybody that's been on the river in a boat has seen sturgeon jumps. It was a guy. One hit him and broke the teeth out of his mouth. Dave uh, knocked a hole in somebody's boat last summer. Knocked a hole in somebody's boat? Yeah, really? they sure did. My husband got hit on the jet ski and, and tore our jet ski, his hand up in the jet ski. We've had him jump right over the boat, right where we're standing. I mean, just inches above our heads. And then next thing I know, I wake up on the bottom of the boat. Really? Never saw the darn thing coming. And it's like being hit by, a, you know, a concrete block traveling 40 miles an hour. There like that, that big around. I know one thing, you won't catch me in the river this time of year with the sturgeons. You don't want to hang out in there. They can't kill you. People have been killed here on the river in just this past year. A little girl was on the boat with her family, and a sturgeon uh, jumped out of the water into the boat and uh, killed her. Killed her? It killed her. Very sad. It's very sad for our community. Yeah, the accident actually happens right across the river here. That river is beautiful and all, but it's, it's dangerous. Despite all the stories and warnings about jumping sturgeon, some boaters still go fast on the river. I guess because the odds of an accident happening are pretty low. 
You definitely have to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But it's still a risk. I still haven't seen a sturgeon jump yet, so I'm headed down to the river to see how often they do. My god, the size of that sturgeon that jumped right here, right in front of me. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. Honestly, I've been sitting here like five, ten minutes maybe, watching the river, looking for a for sturgeon, jumping sturgeon, and boom, right there, right in front of me, this monster fish jumps out. Suddenly, there's sturgeon jumping everywhere. And less than a minute later, boats and jet skis come flying down the river. I'm telling you, with the fish that just jumped right now, I wouldn't be doing what they're doing right now in the river. You guys are insane. Are you not afraid of the sturgeon? No. No? Actually, there's one out of the camp that's got bars coming up. Right, Bill, you had a cage in the front. Yeah, you don't knock them out of the way. Yeah, but you don't have a cage in, that, in the front of that thing. These guys are definitely not worried about the sturgeon. Well, I've heard a lot of stories from a lot of people. I think now it's time to catch a sturgeon and find out why they jump. Because of overfishing, Gulf sturgeons are protected in Florida. So to see these monsters up close, I'm heading out with a team of biologists. They study these animals to help conserve them and protect people on the river. You've got to be Ken. Sure. How, how you doing? How you doing? Good to meet you, finally. Good. Good to meet you, too. This is the team, then, right? Oh, this is the team. So, Sarah, we're going to go down the river a bit here. This is Swanee River. All right. So we're going to drop our net right there and see if we can catch a few fish. All right, sounds good. Tomorrow, I'm leaving for Canada in search of a white sturgeon, the biggest freshwater fish in North America. But right now, I want to catch a monster gulf sturgeon. We're going super slow right now because we're right in the area where the sturgeon jump. Here we go. We're definitely in gulf sturgeon territory now. They're staying here. There's large concentration. Each one of them jumps once every day or two. Hey, Melissa, you got the safe spot on this boat, huh? I do. Yep. You're in the danger zone. We'll go slow. All right, let's get to work here. Cyril, you want to give Mike a hand deploying this net? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. It's time to catch a big sturgeon. And apparently, there are quite a few here. So we make all of our crew carry a knife because every once in a while somebody goes overboard with the net, so you have a net knife right. so you can cut okay. out. So. Well, I wanted, I wanted to see some sturgeon from a clo up close. So. Uh, close up, there you go. <laughs> and keep peeling it out. Yeah, you don't want to get cut by that. No. If you get a really big fish, sometimes they can actually pull that net. Backwards. Yeah. So now what we're doing is we're backing up with the two boats at the same time, and the net is deployed in between the boats, so we're dragging that net across the river. Obviously, if we catch a fish, we'll see it with the floats. The floats will start going down. So Ken, why, why do they jump? Two reasons. One is they jump to, to take a mouthful of air and then get enough momentum to be able to power back down. They need that air inside their swim bladder to maintain buoyancy. All right. The second reason is they make a big splash when they hit the water. They make clicking sounds before and after they jump. And that pattern is communication. It's telling the other sturgeon where they need to be. All right. All right, man. Thank you, man. All right. <laughs> Finally got the explanation as to why the sturgeon jump. Let's catch some sturgeon. Yeah. There's a fish there. Treat, there's a fish. See those floats going under yeah, over there? Yeah, Death yeah. fish. You're going to be on the float line on that side of the boat? Well, wow. there's a lot of weight on that net. We got one there. Uh, it's kind of a little one. You call that a little guy, huh? Yeah, that's right. a little guy. All right, talk about a prehistoric looking animal. You got one right there, my gosh, beautiful fish. And that's a, that's a small guy compared to what I'm chasing. <laughs> now that it's tagged and logged, the biologist will be able to get more information on this fish if it's ever recaptured. Suddenly, the net starts to really move. There must be something huge in it. We got a big one here. It's a monster, man. It's a huge fish in the net. It's the monster gulf sturgeon I've been hoping for. 
Look at the size of this fish. This is starting to be some serious sturgeon here. 130 pounds. It's a beautiful fish. It's never been tagged. This is probably the biggest one we've got this year so far. Really? Yeah. Wow, I'm pretty lucky then. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got the heaviest part here, right? <laughs> what a beautiful ancient creature. Man's oh. an animal. It is. Long length. One nine nine two. Wow, this fish is almost two meters long. That's uh, that's close to seven feet long. Man, I so love to be in the water with fish, especially when they're big ones like this one. <sighs> Look at the size of this animal. It's really big, but imagine the white sturgeon gets even bigger than this. There you go. All right. Boating accidents with Gulf sturgeons are really tragic, but these fish have been around for millions of years, and I hope we'll find a way to live safely together. Oh, wow, Silver Road, a great release, man. That was cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Super. Thank you very much. Yeah. Awesome day. Great. That was some great fishing with the biologist. And now, I'm off to Canada to catch a giant white sturgeon, this time with a rod and reel. I'm headed to the Fraser River in British Columbia, known for its concentration of monster white sturgeon. The white sturgeon is the largest freshwater fish in North America, growing much bigger than the Gulf sturgeon. These fish can live over 100 years and grow to over 1,000 pounds. And I'm hoping to see a big one for myself. All right, the Fraser River, the river of giants. Everything is giant in this part of Canada. Giant mountains, giant bears, and giant fish. See, I told you there are giants in this river. I'm starting my search for a huge white sturgeon with some locals who know this river really well. I'm meeting Chief Hope at the Yale First Nations fish camp. The Yale First Nation has lived on the stretch of the Fraser River for generations. So if anyone can help me catch a massive sturgeon, it's Chief Hope. How are you? Yeah, you sure? Yeah, Chief Hope? Yes. How are you yeah. doing? Uh, welcome. Good to meet you. Yeah, welcome. Come yeah. on in. Thank you. So I understand uh, you're up here uh, looking to uh, catch a fish. Yeah, a large I'm, one. I'm hoping to catch a monster sturgeon. Oh, well, you come to the right place. Ah, uh, this is the life. Uh, I think we should move to the other side of the fire. I'm getting it all over my eyes here. We're <laughs> getting smoked here. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why there were two empty chairs here on this side. <laughs> yeah, right, guys, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys are really welcoming. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move the chairs over. All right. The chief tells me a story about a massive sturgeon they think has been living in the river for over 100 years. How it's... big do you think it is? Well, um, he's at least 18 feet long. 18 feet long? Yeah. I could imagine he's probably Oh, no, 1,200, 1,500 pounds. It's uh, not even a fish at this point. It's a dragon. <laughs> it's a monster. It's a giant. He's ancient, ancient uh, from the dinosaur age. You know, they've, they've survived a long time. Uh, How do you call him? Does he have a name? Well, some people call him uh, Walter. Walter? Why, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Walter is not the only monster in this river. That's big. That's big fish. The guy showed me another huge sturgeon that got caught in a salmon net by accident. Time to go. Chief Hope is going to take me to a spot where his family have fished for generations and where they're massive sturgeon. All right, here we go. And I have a good feeling about this. Thanks a lot for making it happen. Dave, a family member, and the chief's dog, Harley, also come along for the ride. All right. They're monster fish in this river. So I tie on a super strong rig using a 150 pound braided line. For bait, we use a piece of rotten salmon, and hopefully, the sturgeon like it as much as Harley does. Shall we take the boat and bring the bait out there? Yeah, let's do that. <sighs> they're taking the bait uh, in the prime spot because it would be impossible for me to cast that far. And they say that the bigger fish, they hang out uh, in the eddy there. Last time I used this technique to, uh, to drop the bait out, it was in Florida, in shark infested waters with a kayak. That time, I had to carry the bait out myself in a kayak. And I landed a big shark. All right, we've got a shark on the line. So hopefully with a bit of luck, I'll catch a massive white surgeon this time. Thanks a lot, guys. Hey, Harley, you too, you want to catch Walter? The hours rolled by. And even though we changed the bait many times, 
Still no bites. Oh, something touched the bait. My heart is pounding. That's a good sign. I have a good feeling about this spot. That's a big fish. I tightened the drag, but I still can't stop it. Oh, I think we might have to jump on the boat very soon. Let's prepare the boat. The fish is taken off in the current, and the only way to stop it is to chase it with the boat. That's a monster fish. Let's go. Let's go, guys. It's pulling me. Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys, for being that fast. I think we got, we might have a, a really big fish on the line right now. Whew. We had to jump in the boat because I was getting spooled. Yeah, he's sure taking us for a ride, Bob. Yeah, he's a big guy. He's pulling the boat along. The fish took off in the main rapids. It's a big fish because I can barely move it. Man, that's a big fish. He's got a lot of weight. I can't see what size it is yet, but it's big because I can barely move it from the bottom. No! Oh, no! No! Oh, no! We lost it. Oh, boy. Well, that's uh, what happens when you get that big guy. You don't get to see him. He just walks away with the, uh, walks away with the line. He broke me up. That's a 150-pound line. Yeah. 150 pound, braided line. Oh, yeah. And he wasn't even getting tired yet. He broke off a 150 pound braided line. 150 pound. Chief Hope thinks it could have been the legendary Walter on my line. And once again, no, no. he got away. Oh, boy. I could feel the line rubbing against the rocks, and I was like, ugh, this line is going to break any time now. And... But oh. thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I lost the fish. Like I said, don't feel bad, because nobody's done it yet. Thank you so much. You get him. You get him. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I do. <laughs> I don't know if it was Walter, but I just lost a monster sturgeon. And now, there's a storm rolling in. But Chief Hope has put me in touch with one of the best sturgeon fishermen around. And tomorrow, he's taking me out. Today, our boat is equipped to go further upstream where there's an even bigger concentration of monster fish. Hey, Dave. Cyril. How's it going, man? Good, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Man, this water is fast. Before heading out, Dave wants to make sure I understand what I'm getting into. We should really have a quick uh, safety orientation. So the first thing we have is we have a bunch of life jackets under this seat here, Cyril. Okay. And the next thing is we have a throw rope. Okay. Now, if you were to fall in, we'll whip you the rope, and you just wrap that around your waist, and we'll haul you in. The thing is, people die on this river every year. Up to five, six people a year will drown on this river. Five to six people five a year? Five to six people a year. You're kidding. It's not like in Florida on the Suwannee River, where it's actually the sturgeon that causes accidents. Here, it's the, uh, the river that does. The mighty Fraser. The mighty Fraser. Let's go fishing. Let's do it. Let's do it. Look at the logs stacked up on the rocks over there. That shows you how big this river must get when it floods. How powerful it is. Dave brings me far upstream to a huge eddy where he says the fishing should be excellent. Just above us are some super violent rapids that are over 200 feet deep. Check out the deer over there. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, Cyril. Are there any grizzlies around here? No grizzly bears down here, but, uh, you know, you might see a Sasquatch. A <laughs> Sasquatch? Yeah. That's the Bigfoot, right? That's right, the Bigfoot, yeah. Really? Yeah. Are you, are you believe in them? Yeah, yeah, lots of people do. You never know. There are monsters in this river. And with this current, you need some serious gear. 30 ounces, man. <laughs> Heavy weight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's not going to make the prettiest cast. Oh, you'll be fine, Cyril. Yeah, but it's still pretty ugly. 
Imagine there's so much current here on the freezer that for the bait to actually go down and, and, and to stay in place, we're using sinkers that are 30 ounces. It's just shy of two pounds. That's not even a sinker at this point, it's an anchor. 150 pound braided line, a piece of salmon, and a heavy sinker. I think I'm ready for a big sturgeon. Small bait really works, right? Yes. I catch more big fish on small baits than big baits. Later on in the year in August, when the sockeye salmon are running, we run what we call stink bait. It stinks so bad, it would choke a goat. <laughs> <laughs> it really would. And they love that stuff. They love it. We're looking for giant fish, but even though they're monsters, we're using tiny pieces of bait, tiny pieces of salmon, sort of like, uh, sort of like sashimi but real stinky sashimi, and, and the more it stinks, the better it is. Cheryl, bite. Yeah, man, yep, yep. This is the first white sturgeon I've ever had on my line, but it's pretty small. All right, he's gone. I got a long way to go to get back to the kind of monster that broke me off yesterday. Look at that. He's dragging it out. He's a big one. Go. It killed me to lose that fish. But at least it confirmed there are monsters in this river. Beauty. No bites around here, so we make a move. Dave has caught lots of big fish around here, so we just have to hope that we'll get one today. The sturgeons here, do they jump? Yes, they do jump. They do, huh? Yeah. But it's not a problem for boaters, is it? No, it doesn't seem to be a problem for boaters, okay. no. Because in Florida, where I was, man, you know, people get hit on boats, you know, by, by jumping sturgeon. Wow. There's been accidents, deaths. It's really bad. Wow, we haven't had that happen here. We've yeah. never had a sturgeon land on a boat. Wow. And it'd be even worse here, because the size of those giants here, right? Yeah, you wouldn't want a 12-footer landing on the floor. No. No. Bite, 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 bite. Yep. Be patient, Cyril, be patient. Let him eat it, let him eat it. There it is, there it is. Fish on, Cyril, way to go, buddy. To avoid getting tangled, Dave moves his line out of the way. Try to keep it away from the lines there. All right, fish on. Yeah. Little guy. Incredible, the power to have for such a little fish. Very strong fish. Yes, first white sturgeon. At least he can only get bigger from here, right? Yeah. Dave brings the boat to shore so I can get in the water to release my first white sturgeon. All right, white sturgeon. The largest freshwater fish in North America. Not this guy in particular, because I'm far from the monster I'm looking for, but... Oh my gosh, the fight that I got out of this fish, unbelievable. And this little guy, in 100 years, might be over 20 feet long. But I don't think I'll be around to see that, buddy. Thanks a lot, Dave, for getting me my first white sturgeon, man. You're welcome. That's really cool. A little short, but... Well, if we add five or six feet to that, we'll have a good fish. <laughs> That'd be a monster. That's exactly what I'm chasing. That'd be a trophy fish. Eight, nine yeah. feet. Yeah. That's gotta hurt. It will. <laughs> it will. <laughs> it will. That was a beautiful little white sturgeon. Exactly the species I've been hunting. But now, I want a monster over eight feet long. And speaking of monsters, this part of the world seems to have a few. Tomorrow, I'm gonna try to catch a big sturgeon from the shore. But for now, I wanna explore the local mystery of the Sasquatch, or Bigfoot. Sasquatch signs are everywhere around here. And I have to admit, I'm kind of intrigued. No doubt about it. I'm right in the heart of Bigfoot country, but here in Canada, he's called Sasquatch. All right, buddy? So today, I'm meeting with a Sasquatch expert who has spent his life searching for this mysterious creature. You've got to be Thomas. Hello, hello. How you doing? Not bad. How you doing, man? Hey, man. Great Good to, to see meet you. you. Yeah, tired of looking for monster fish here after monster primates now. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> cool. Come on in to my little Sasquatch hovel over here. Right here. All right. Cool. And it's all about Sasquatch in here. Yep. There's not even room for you. Well, I'm just an accessory. <laughs> where do you where do you sleep? 
On the couch. On a couch. I've been there since 2003. Yeah, and this is the 1958 Jerry Crew casting that gave Sasquatch its American name, Bigfoot. Can we call it Sasquatch? You know, a creature about 78 feet tall, covered in hair, massive arms, rather gorilla-like in appearance. That's what the Sasquatch is. Nothing supernatural, paranormal. It's not an alien from a spaceship either. <laughs> Thomas has been spending his entire life for us researching the answer to the uh, to the Sasquatch, to the Bigfoot question. Is it out there? Does it exist? And yeah. actually, you were telling me that you wrote your own books. Right? Yeah, I've written three, and I've co-authored two others. Really? Yeah. Well, you can see the map pin here. This is just the local area. It's nice to know that most of the Sasquatch sightings have occurred along the Fraser River, where I'm fishing. <laughs> Thomas's research is mostly based in the surrounding forests, where witnesses claim to have seen the Sasquatch. But these are second-hand accounts. Thomas himself has had a life-changing experience. But if I want to know more, he wants me to join him for a ride in the woods. Let's look for a Sasquatch. All right. Have you ever seen it? In 37 years of research, I may have had a fleeting glimpse once. Along a cut line, I saw a figure walk from the center of that cut line to the trees on the right-hand side. I do believe that we have a large bipedal primate in the forested areas of the Pacific Northwest of the United States and Canada. In 37 years, Thomas has only had a glimpse of the Sasquatch once, but he's convinced he's out there. 2004, what I saw, right by that cliff there. A lot of the times people are fearful, but most of the time they're just stunned because it's over so quickly. You know, the thing moves away and, and they're talking to themselves. You know, what was that? What did I just see? You gotta be kidding me. We head out to explore what a typical Sasquatch habitat looks like. It's not just Sasquatch that's big around here. The trees are huge. <laughs> No, but seriously, what do you do if you see Sasquatch? If it comes after you, run. If it catches you, fight. <laughs> because you don't do either, you're going to die. Thomas is a true Sasquatch believer, and I gotta admit, it's pretty intriguing. So he puts me in touch with Sylvia and Todd, who claim to have had a very close encounter with the creature. So this is it, this is the site, right? This is the site. Going for a nice bike ride. We're heading back to the truck, and uh, I was behind, and I heard this this noise. Oh my god. And there it was. Oh my god. Go hard, go. How big he was and coming so fast, I knew that he was not friendly. Like, he was not, he wanted me. I didn't even want to look back because I was scared it was just going to grab me. And all I could think was, this is it. Was it running on its two rear legs or, or? It seems like its arms are, are moving, so you, you're not seeing the back of his of his legs, right? You're just concentrating. I think you're just seeing this and then the big body. When you're that scared, you cannot you don't even, think of any yeah. of that stuff. All you're doing is going, what am I looking at? And holy, we got to get out of here. Go hard, go, go, oh my god. You guys are sure it was not a bear, right? Not, it was not, not a bear. A it was not a bear, it was not a cougar, it was not any kind of animal that I've ever seen before. Up until now, I didn't quite know what to think about Sasquatch, or Bigfoot, you know, myth, reality. I didn't know, but hearing her side of the story, how emotional she gets, honestly, I don't know what to, what to think anymore. Thank nice you. you. Thanks so much. Nice so meeting you. Really nice to meet you. Yeah. That was uh, quite a story. Yeah. You're never going to come back here either, right? <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> I have to admit that I'm not quite sure what to make of all these stories. But there's one monster I know is definitely out there. The white sturgeon. All right. Today I'm going to try to find a spot to fish from the shore. But if I hook into a monster fish, I'm not going to have a boat to chase it down. So it's going to be me against the fish. Go try to catch a giant sturgeon from the shore. I have to say, after talking with Sylvia, Todd, and Thomas, if I hear a noise in the woods, I'd rather it be a bear than a Sasquatch. Pretty impressive how long this train is. It's endless.
I finally get to the river, and the view is really spectacular. The river's down there, but now I gotta get down to it. It's really steep here. Not the kind of place you want to fall. So I take it one step at a time. I've been hiking for over an hour, but finally, this stretch of the river seems promising. That looks like a pretty good spot, because you see that rock right behind it is a point. And what that point does is that it shelters this whole area against the main current of the river. It creates what we call a netty. Because the fish, they don't tend to sit in the main current of the river because it's too much effort. You have to be struggling against the current on a permanent basis. Whereas if you're in the eddy, you can sit back, relax, and wait for the food to come to you. So in theory, it should be a pretty good spot. But it's just in theory, though. Out here, I've got to make do with what's around. To make a rod holder, there's nothing better than a good old dead branch. Now, I just hope there's a monster lurking nearby. Almost a full hour goes by and no action at all. But then suddenly, the fish away from the main current because if it gets to it it's gonna be really hard to stop it man the power of this fish unbelievable I gotta make sure this fish doesn't take off in the main current over there otherwise it's game over I stopped it, but now I still have to bring it to shore. It's right here. Oh, man, the head shakes. Unbelievable. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's not the monster sturgeon I'm after yet, but it's a really nice fish. All right. Beautiful white sturgeon. Man, gosh, I'm really happy right now. Okay, it's not the monster, the giant I'm looking for, but it's got to be four feet, maybe four and a half, being a fisherman. <laughs> but, uh, man, gosh, the fight that it gave me. I can't even imagine what the fight would be like with an eight-footer or a nine-footer. must be insane. Beautiful animal. They have those bony plates, the skewers on the side here on the, and on the back. But they are much, they're much softer than a, on the Gulf sturgeon. The Gulf sturgeon was so armor-plated compared to that fish. This is a beautiful prehistoric fish, even though it's not the monster I'm after. But with the Fraser's strong current, it was still an intense fight. So if I hook a really big one without a boat to chase it down, it's gonna be almost impossible to land it. I can't stop thinking about the huge white sturgeon I lost with Chief Ho. Look at that. No! I'm running out of time, so today, I'm meeting with a fisherman who can bring me even farther upstream to a remote canyon that's home to monster fish. Dean is my last hope to catch the big white sturgeon I've been looking for. All right, right buddy, man. let's get it done. Let's do it. But to get to the best parts, we're gonna have to cross the rapids. It's 230 feet deep. 230 feet deep over there? The whole Fraser Canyon pours right through those rocks there. I mean, this just tosses you around, so it's very, very dangerous. Rapids out here. Now you gotta be careful up here, and you know, you don't go fast up here, you drive cautiously. It's some pretty treacherous water. Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. This isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. Good job, man. 
He'll go from there to there in three seconds. In three seconds. Fish are nuts. Yeah, they're crazy. They're hard, they're nuts, and this is a time of year when they go mental, ballistic. tip went boom, boom. I'm not sure the fish is at the end of the line right now. For sure that was a bite. But the fish put the bait back out. So we keep fishing. Man, the weather changes fast here. Maybe the fishing will change and we'll just get a big one right away, too. That Sometimes they say the storms can bring on some real big fish. Well, I just hope that Dean's right. Whoa. It looks like the storm is starting to wake up the fish. Man, big fish came right to the surface right here, right by the boat. Oh, here we go. Finally, a bite. Oh, yeah, it's got some weight to it. All right, big fish. Watch that line. Bring it right up, right up, right up. I've got a big fish on, but the lines are tangled, and this could cause my line to break or the fish to get off the hook. Oh, there's a fish. We've got to figure this out fast, or we're going to lose this fish. Yeah. Clear. We had a little bit of a tangle here, but now it's all clear, and we have a nice fish on the line. Yes, coming up. Yes, coming up. Whoa! Beautiful. Man, the shower that this fish gave me right now. <laughs> that was a nice jump. I thought that fish was gonna land in the boat. Wow. I love fighting big fish. I think we got we got one on the line right now. I can feel it in my back, man. I mean, that's, uh, that's a big fish. It's coming up. After 20 intense minutes, the fish is almost at the surface. Beautiful. There he is. There, there he is. Wow. Oh. Nice fish, man. Beauty. It's a big sturgeon, bigger than any I've caught so far. I think I can still catch a bigger fish. But before releasing this one, we want to do our part to help preserve the species. Right now, what we're doing is we're bringing this fish to shore so we can measure it and tag it. Just like Ken and his team studies the Gulf sturgeon in Florida. Close to seven feet long. Dean tags and measures the white sturgeon in the Fraser River. And I'm always happy when I get a chance to help with fish conservation. And I get in the water there and you pass me the rod again, right? Oh, <laughs> let me tell you, this is not Florida anymore. When I bring the fish to shore, Dean gets ready to scan it to see if it's been tagged before. You'll have to bring them towards me here, a little zero, and then I can do the scanning, and then we can get a measurement on this fish and stuff. Right. Recapture? So, is it a recapture? recapture? The fish has already been tagged, so now we just have to measure it. 180. Six feet long. That's a really nice fish. Look at the size of this fish, and yet it's not even the monster I'm looking for. All right. We are in a really good spot, and according to Dean, there's some real monsters here. There's a bite on that rod. Look, you see the bite? Look at the rod tip. Boom. Boom. I'm telling you, it's so tempting to just grab the rod and set the hook, but you don't want to do that. You can't do that. You got to give the fish time to take the bait well before you actually pick up the slack and set the hook. I got to make sure the fish has the bait in its mouth and it's not just playing with it. So I need to be patient. That's a fish, and not the bottom. That's a monster, man. Yeah, it's a fish. Nice job. Yeah, still there. A lot of weight on that fish. Let me fish. slide it around you, Cyril. Let me slide it around you. Right. Here we go. Unreal. I was sure I was hooked onto the bottom. Yes. There was so much weight. 
Alright, we got a big trip on the line, that's for sure. That's a giant, man. It looks like you could be in for a while in this battle. Yeah, no kidding. Nice work, Cyril. The land of the giants, man. <laughs> wow, look at that. That's just unbelievable. I'm telling you, this has to be a big fish because the drag is almost set at maximum. And uh, that fish was pulling line as if there was no drag on that reel. Wow. All that work that I just did, it's gone. I'm glad that fish stopped before he reached the fast water there, because if it reaches the fast water, there's no way we're going to stop this fish. It's going to go down the current, being held by the current, and that's it. It's gone. Ah. Every time I manage to reel in some line, this massive fish takes it back out again. fighting this fish for about 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, and I still haven't seen it. That's a sign it's a monster. I can't believe you're doing this without a belt. Right now, I'm looking for a spot on my leg that doesn't hurt. <laughs> oh, he's here. The sinker is up. The fish is almost at the surface. Oh, he's blowing his air, Cheryl. Yeah. See that? All right, it's coming up. He's there. All right. Big fish right here. Check this out. This is a massive fish. There's no doubt it's the monster I've been chasing. Look at the size of that fish. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a fish. Nice fish, man. Oh, nice work on that rod. Now, we got to bring this fish to shore so we can tag and measure it. Cyril, you OK back there? Yeah, I'm all right, man. Perfect. Look at that. I learned my lesson this time. <laughs> Put waiters on. Thanks, buddy. Oh. Woo! <laughs> Look at the size of that fish. Look at the size of this animal. Unbelievable. Dean, that's a monster, man. Beautiful. It's a virgin, Cyril. No, nothing in it? Yeah, never been it's tagged. Never been tagged, huh? Oh. All right. This fish has never been tagged, so we're going to put a tag on it. This sturgeon is now tagged. So if it's recaptured in the future, scientists will be able to track its migration patterns and gain valuable knowledge about the species. This fish is 96 inches long. <laughs> that's an eight-foot fish. Eight-foot fish, man, that's a big fish. <laughs> Look at the size of this fish. It's a monster, eight feet long. It's actually a dinosaur. This fish, they barely changed for the last 175 million years. Beautiful animal. All right, buddy. Yes, man. What a fish! <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. That's that was a beautiful animal. Beautiful. Nice job out there. Wow. Thank you. I was in Florida to see a big girl sturgeon up close. Boom, right there, right in front of me. And we caught one of the biggest specimens that a research team had ever seen. It's a monster, man. Then I crossed the continent to fish on Canada's Fraser River and spent days chasing a monster white sturgeon. Whoa. Whoa. And after some unbelievable battles, I finally found what I was looking for. <laughs> Get the size of this fish! So I'm not good at keeping eye contact with you because I keep staring out there to see if I could see one. You don't believe me, I've been scanning around since we started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm soaked, man. I'm a little cold, I gotta say. Well, we can get inside and warm up. Let's go yeah, inside fish. where? In the boat? Yeah, in the boat. <laughs> Is that warm what we call warm? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you keep your girlfriend here? Girlfriend? No girlfriend? Sasquatch is your girlfriend, I guess, huh? Girlfriend? <laughs>